Hello guys, welcome back. I'm Yusuf Shakil and you're watching CSS tutorial series. In this video, we are going to learn about CSS float property. So let's get started. All right, so I have opened brackets and now I'll go ahead and create a new file inside the project folder and I'll save it as float.html and I'll write the following HTML code. So we have the doc type HTML opening and closing HTML tag. We have the opening and closing head tag. And for this page, we have set the title to float. Now inside the CSS folder, we'll go ahead and create a new file and we'll save this as float.css. And now we'll include this float.css file inside the HTML file. So inside the head, we'll write link and we'll set rel to stylesheet and href to css slash float.css. And now we'll open this in live preview. And now we'll go ahead and create a sample layout like we did in the previous video. So this will be our sample layout and it will have a header, a container and a footer. And inside the container we'll have four sub divs that is div one, div two, div three and div four. So from our previous video, we'll go ahead and copy paste the following HTML. So we have a div having ID header and inside this div we have a paragraph and we have set the content to id equal to header and this is the header then we have another div for container and for this div we have set the id to container and inside this div we have a paragraph and the content of that paragraph is id equal to container then we have sub divs or child divs inside this div having id container so we have div having id div dash one and inside this div we have two paragraphs. Then we have another div having id div dash two and we have two paragraphs. Then we have the third div and we have the fourth div. And finally we have our last div for the footer. So for this div we have the id equal to footer. And inside this div, we have a paragraph and the content is set to ID equal to footer. And now to make this sample layout look like this, we have to write some style rules inside the CSS file. So from our previous video, we'll go ahead and copy paste the following style rules. So we have set the padding and margin for the body to zero. And for every div, we have set the padding to five pixels. Now we have set the header and footer background color to light blue. So we have the header and footer in light blue color. Then we have set the container background color to light gray. So this is our container and it is in light gray. Then we have the four divs div1, div2, div3 and div4 and we have set the background color of div1 to light salmon and we have set the background color of div2 to light green and for div3 light pink and div4 to light yellow. And now let us talk about the float property. We use the float property to push the element to the left side or to the right side. So float property and this float property can take two values left and right so we have left and right so let's say we want to push this div 2 to the left so we'll write hash div dash 2 since this div2 element is having id div-2 so we are writing hash div-2 and we'll write float and we'll set the value to left and now if you look at the output you can see this div-2 element is now pushed to the left and the div dash three element 
is now brought to its right side. So it has moved from its previous location to the right side of this div dash two element. Similarly, we can make the div dash two element float at the right side. So for that, we'll set the float property to right. And now if you look at the output, you can see this div dash two element is at the right side and div dash three element has moved from its previous location and has moved to the left side of div dash two. So let us make this div dash two element float at the left side. So for that, we'll make float property value to left. The next property that we'll discuss is the clear property. And we use the clear property when we don't want any element to float at the left side or at the right side or at both the sides of any given element. So the second property is the clear property and it can take three values left, right, both. Now if you look at the current output, we can see that the div dash two element is floating at the left side because we have set the float property to left. And since the div dash two element is floating at the left side, the div dash three element has moved from its original location to the right side of div dash two. Now, if we don't want any element to float at the left side of div dash three element, then we have to set the clear property for the div dash three element to left. In this example, let's say we don't want any element to float at the left side of div dash three element. Then we'll write hash div dash three and we'll set the clear property to left. And now if you look at the output, we can see the div dash two element is floating at the left side but the div dash three element has not moved to the right side of div dash two. This is because we have set the clear property for the div dash three element to left. This means we don't want any element to float at the left side of div dash three. Now let us discuss the float right and clear right property. So let us go ahead and comment this and this so if we want to push the div dash two element to the right side then we have to set the float property for div dash two element to right so for that we'll write hash div dash two and we'll set the float property to right. And now if you look at the output, we can see that the div dash two element is pushed at the right side. And since we have set the float property to right, the div dash three element has left its original place and has now moved to the left side of div dash two. And now if we don't want any element to float at the right side of div dash three, then we have to set the clear property for div dash three to right. And if you look at the output, we can see that the div dash two element is floating at the right side of div dash three. So, if we don't want any floating element at the right side of div dash three, we'll write hash div dash three and we'll set the clear property to right. And now if we look at the output, we can see that the div dash two element is floating at the right side. But since we have set the clear property for div dash three element to right, so no element is floating at the right side of div dash three. 
So div dash three has not left its original location and has not moved to the left side of div dash two. And now let us discuss the both value for the clear property. So let us go ahead and comment this. And this one. Now let's say we want to push the div dash one element at the left. So for that, we'll write hash div dash one and we'll set the float property to left. And now if you look at the output, the div dash one element is floating at the left side. And since it is floating at the left side, the div dash two element has left its original position and has moved to the right side of div dash one. Now let's say we want to float the div dash three element at the right side. So we'll write hash div dash three and we'll set the float property to right. And now if you look at the output, you can see that the div dash three element is floating at the right side. And since we have set the float property for div dash three to right, the div dash four element has left its original location and has moved to the left side of div dash three. And now let's say we don't want any element to float at the left side of div dash two, and we don't want any element to float at the right side of div dash two. So in that case, we can write hash div dash two, and we can set the clear property to both. And now if we look at the output, we can see that there is no element floating at the left side of div dash two, and there is no element floating at the right side of div dash two. Even though we have set the float property to left for div dash one, and we have set the float property to right for div dash three. So when we set the clear property for any element to both, then no element will be allowed to float at the left side and at the right side for that element. All right, guys, this brings us to the end of this tutorial. I'll post the tutorial notes on my website, dyclassroom.com. And all the code that we're writing in this tutorial series, I'll put them in my GitHub repository. You'll find all the links in the video description. So feel free to check that out. And if you find this video interesting, then please give this video a like and please subscribe my channel. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. And like always, stay happy and keep smiling. Bye.